Okay, let's begin. So, uh, recall that yesterday we proved the soundness theorem. Yeah, we proved actually the version 2 of soundness theorem. Version 2 states that if T can be deduced from S, then T is a logical consequence of S. And the version 1, which we did not state, but I am stating now, says that if S is satisfiable, then S is consistent. Completeness theorem is the harder part out of this duo and it is the converse of it. So now completeness theorem version 1 is what we are proving right now. We are saying that if S is consistent, then S is satisfiable. There is of course a version 2 and that will be a tutorial problem to show that these versions are equivalent. Yeah, so if T is a logical consequence, then T has a proof from S. Yeah, there is a formal proof. And we have proved, uh, we have completed the proof of step 1 of the proof of complete, uh, completeness theorem version 1. We showed yesterday using what? That if S is consistent, then there is a maximally consistent extension of S. What did we use? Zorn's lemma. Okay. And our job today is to prove step 2. And step 2 is the construction of valuation. Yeah, we need a valuation. We need to show that S is satisfiable. Yeah, so S is satisfiable means there is a valuation V which precisely, sat, uh, I mean which satisfies S. So step 2 Okay, step 2 says that define a valuation V from SL to true false by V of a formula S is true if and only if S belongs to T naught. So T naught is the maximally consistent extension that we obtained from step 1 and now we are claiming this. Now just a quick recap of the definition of a valuation. In how many ways can you define a valuation? Two ways. The first one is def definition on SL and the second one is just definition on L. Now the second one is very easy to define, right? For definition on L, what do we do? We just take any arbitrary function to every propositional variable we assign either true or false and then we extend it in a unique fashion. Whereas here we have to do a bit more work. Yeah, here it is a function from SL to true false which satisfies certain properties. What are those properties? It preserves conjunction and negation that was in the original setup. Now we are, what is our adequate set of connectives? Uh, implication and uh, negation. So for negation, what do we need to show? Yes, uh, so the valuation of negation T is false if and only if valuation of T is true. Okay. And uh, what should we prove for implication? Valuation of an implication T1 implies T2 is true if and only if either valuation of T1 is false or valuation of T2 is true. Now something like valuation is true has to be replaced by this. Okay, so we are supposed to prove something. So let me write down a bunch of claims. So claim 1, I am going to leave some space for now. Claim 2, we are going to prove 3 claims and after that we are done. So claim 2, for each T in SL, okay, T belongs to T naught, if and only if, 
negation t does not belong to t naught. Now quickly observe t belongs to t naught. What does that mean according to the definition? V of t is V of t is true if and only if V of negation t is Okay, so now it makes sense, yeah, whatever we are doing. So, this is just proving thing for negation and claim 3 would be for S and T in SL, S implies T, this particular formula is in T naught if and only if, what should happen? S does not belong to T naught or T belongs to T naught. Yeah, uh, let us just write down the green version again. So, V of S implies T is true if and only if V of S is false or V of T is true. But before we prove these two claims, we need some very strong observation. This observation I can say in simple words that T naught is a complete theory. So, T naught is a theory, yeah, I mean theory is a consistent set of very, uh, of formulas. T naught is maximally consistent, so maximally consistent actually means it is a complete theory. It is as good as an ultra filter and let us see what we mean. So, it says that V of uh, sorry, not, it does not have to be about V. It says that, oh sorry, uh, I think I, I used a wrong terminology. I should, T naught is, I should not use complete theory. T naught is deductively closed. T naught is deductively closed means that for u in t naught, uh, for u in SL, not in t naught, u belongs to t naught if and only if there is a proof of u from t naught. So, one part of claim 1 is obvious, which, which part is that? If u belongs to T naught, then there is a proof of u from T naught, why? NLA. NLA, good. So, let us prove claim 1. So, if u belongs to T naught, then T proves u naught, it is just a one step proof, it is NLA, okay. Now the converse is what we are looking for, that is the definition of being deductively closed. Deductively closed means whatever you can conclude from it, you have already included it. Whatever you can deduce from it, it is closed under all its deductions, okay. So, uh, Yes, so this is our direct implication and for the reverse implication we have to do some work. So suppose u can be deduced from T naught, then what can we say? <coughs> sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, let us prove it using contradiction. <laughs> not contradiction, contrapositive. Suppose u does not belong to T naught. 
if u doesn't belong to t0 then what can you say t0 was what from previous slide t0 was maximally consistent maximally consistent means it is saturated yeah if you add something else to it then it will explode so something which is not in it if you add something which is not in it then it will explode explode means it will be inconsistent so then by maximality of the consistent set t not t not union u what can you say about this yes this is inconsistent okay then now that we have obtained this does this remind you of any lemma that we proved last time so, t not union u is inconsistent if and only if by lemma 8 t not proves negation u okay good okay now uh, then what if yeah so now we are going to claim that negation u belongs to t naught yeah so claim now claim inside a claim yeah but this is a very simple claim so negation u belongs to t naught if not then what will happen oh uh, just give me a moment that's not what we are sorry no we have to use lemma 9 uh, so maybe i am not writing the claim properly what does lemma 9 state If T not proves you, yes, okay. So I don't need a claim. So recall that if T not proves you and T not proves negation you, then by lemma nine. T naught is inconsistent. Now we are already given one part. T naught proves negation u. That is given. So if T naught proves u, then what will we obtain? That T naught is inconsistent. But we know T naught is consistent. So therefore, T naught doesn't prove u. If these two things are true, then T naught will be inconsistent. One of them we know is true. So the second one has to be false. So therefore T naught doesn't prove U and that's precisely what we wanted to show. Yeah, U was assumed to be not in T naught and then we showed that there is no proof of U from T naught. Okay, so claim one is done. Yeah, so whatever you can prove, it already belongs. It's deductively closed. Okay, so now let us try to prove claim 2. So claim 2. So suppose, okay, so it's a two-part thing again t belongs to t naught if and only if negation t is not in t naught okay any ideas how to proceed what if both of them happen then t naught is inconsistent why see if for some 
P in SL, both T belongs to T naught and negation T belongs to T naught, then by claim 1, oh I, I mean claim 1 is both ways, then by claim 1, T naught will deduce T and T naught will also deduce negation T and hence T naught is inconsistent by lemma 9. Okay, so therefore both of them cannot belong simultaneously at least one of them doesn't belong. So now we have to show that if one doesn't belong then the second one must belong. Okay, so let us try to show that. So if T is not in T naught then what will happen? If something is not in a maximally consistent set then, then T naught union singleton T is inconsistent by maximality of T naught. Okay, then what is the next step? Then T naught proves? Therefore, T naught proves negation T and which lemma is that? By lemma 8 and therefore, negation T belongs to T naught and that is by claim 1. Okay, so we have proved what we needed. It's simple. If T is in T naught then we are done already. If T is in T naught, one of them must belong, that's claim 2. Yeah, I mean T belongs to T naught if and only if the other one doesn't belong. So we have already shown that both of them cannot belong. So we just had to prove that if T doesn't belong, then negation T does belong. We are done. So claim 2 is done. Now finally claim 3. Okay. So again that is if and only if, let me remind you what the statement is. It says that this implication, conditional implication S implies T belongs if and only if either the first one doesn't belong or the second one belongs. Okay, so uh, we are trying to show the forward implication now, yeah. So suppose S implies uh, we will prove it by contrapositive. So suppose S belongs to T naught and T does not belong to T naught. Then what will happen? If T does not belong then what can we conclude? So by claim 2, It suffices to show that negation of S implies T belongs to T naught. We want to show that S implies T does not belong to T naught. So by claim 2 it is sufficient to show that its negation does belong to T naught. Okay, so how do we go about this? Lemma? Lemma 6, very good. How do you use Lemma 6? MP twice, okay. So you want to conclude uh, from T naught, okay. I'm, uh, don't write anything, just observe. Yeah, so Lemma, you want to conclude this as the final line. And what is Lemma 6? S 
S implies negation T implies negation S implies T and this is all in bracket. So this is lemma 6 but we also need monotonicity because we need T naught on this side that is monotonicity. Then from there we need to the middle step will obviously be one application of MP yeah, and that application will give us this. This is MP and the second application of MP and we have to have first two lines. What two lines? To eliminate this S and to eliminate this negation T. So T naught proves S. Yeah, that's NLA. And T naught proves negation T. What is that? Claim to. Claim to and hypothesis that T is not in T naught. So easy enough. That's why we proved lemma 6. Yeah, just for this particular step. Well, I should correct. That's why we stated lemma 6. We haven't yet proved. Okay, so this is one side. The second side is, again there are, uh, we'll use contrapositive of the second side. Okay, I'm changing the slide now. Okay. So if S is not in T naught, yeah, that's what we need to show. S is not in T naught or uh, I mean under both conditions we need this. Okay. So if S is not in T naught, then what can you conclude from claim 2? Negation S is in T naught by claim 2 and what else? By claim 1, T naught proves negation S by claim 1. Okay. And also, we are assuming this T belongs to T naught. We are not using contrapositive. And since T belongs to T naught, T naught also proves T. Okay, and what do we need to prove? We need to prove that S implies T is in T naught. So, which lemma should we use? Where can you see S implies T? Lemma 3. Okay, so what is lemma 3 saying? So lemma 3, let me write down. Lemma 3 says that negation S implies S implies T. Okay, that is lemma 3. And monotonicity. By monotonicity, we can increase the left hand side to T naught, then because we have uh, S implies T, okay. So this is by MP provided we say that T naught proves negation S which we already had. Okay. Uh, now 
what is the final step therefore s implies t belongs to t naught by claim 1 i think i'm uh, missing something yes okay 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 so uh, let me erase this second line second line is not relevant we have to show let uh, observe here that we have to show either this or this under any of these assumptions we have to conclude that s implies t is in t naught so right now we are just assuming this and proving that s implies t is in t naught okay so so let me erase this So, uh, in this first case, we have done this. Now, there is second subcase. If T belongs to T naught, then T naught proves T NLA. And then how do I obtain S implies T? Any idea? L A 1. So, this is T implies S implies T, this is L A 1 and then T naught proves S implies T that is M P. Right, so under both conditions we have shown that, oh and then again therefore S implies T belongs to T naught by claim 1. So, we completed the proof, but we still need to show one more thing. And what is that thing? We have to say something. Since this is adequate, we have shown from claim 2 and 3 that V naught is indeed a valuation of oh, V. No, we did not use V naught perhaps. Yeah, we just use V. So, V is indeed a valuation and therefore, our proof of complete oh uh, and one more line not not done yet now s clearly v of t naught is true yeah because that's how we defined the valuation and since s is a subset of t naught v models s Yeah, v of capital S is true. So, this completes the proof of the completeness theorem. Any questions? If you look at this proof carefully, then it is quite simple. The first step is just Zahn's lemma which is very standard. This is your first course in which you are looking at Zahn's lemma. So, maybe that is why you find it a bit hard. But once you start seeing it in different courses, different subjects, then it will be the same grind, always the same grind. Yeah, Zahn's lemma has the same flavor wherever you go in whatever field of mathematics. And step two is once we know what we are supposed to do, then it is easy to do it. The only hard part here is to come up with those lemmas. Lemma 7, 8, 9 I would strongly recommend you to remember. Yeah, The other ones if you need them I will provide. Okay. So, uh, one thing I want to 
talk about over here that soundness and completeness yeah these two statements are about this proof system okay let me write it so this is a remark soundness and completeness which are converses of each other are about the proof system or proof calculus I mean the one that we followed what is it called Hilbert style proof calculus so it says that whatever axiom schema we took and whatever rules of inference we chose they are sufficient to describe our understanding our understanding means semantics yeah that's what these statements show all these four statements whatever we wanted to capture we were successful yeah we did not write down any nonsense rules or any nonsense axioms that is soundness and whatever we did that was sufficient to describe everything we wanted to describe that is completeness okay so completeness theorem is all about a proof system whereas incompleteness theorem which we will see at the end of the course very last lecture that is all about completeness of a theory incompleteness of a theory okay so uh, we have finished the proof of this